Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Echodometrics. This tutorial covers how to specify the vector error correction model. So if I'm to ask you what is a VECM, you may say it's a system containing a vector of two or more variables and that all the variables in the VECM are endogenous, that is, there are no exogenous variables. You could also say that the VECM is constructed only if the variables are co-integrated. And co-integration implies that there is evidence of a long-run relationship. A VECM is also a restricted VAR model which has the co-integrating restrictions built into the specification. And a VECM is constructed to examine both the long and short run dynamics of the co-integrated series. We can also say that the VECM restricts the long run behavior of the endogenous variables to converge to their co-integrating relationships. The co-integrating term in a VECM is simply known as the error correction term. And a VECM is also a representation of a co-integrated VAR. Lastly, we can say that the resulting VAR from a VECM representation has more efficient coefficients. But for you to know how to specify a VECM, you must understand how a VAR model is specified. So on the screen, you are seeing a three-variable VAR model. And one thing you will observe that when you are specifying your VAR model, your VAR model must be specified in levels and not in first difference. If you are specifying your VAR model in differences, that is a misspecification. That is, wrongly specified the VAR model. VAR model must be specified in their level form. And a VAR model has variables in which the dependent variable is a function of its lag values and also contains the lag values of other variables in the model. So when you're looking at a VAR system, all the variables in here are endogenous. There are no exogenous variables in a VAR model. So again, on observation, you will see that all the variables listed here, they do not have the difference operators. All of them are specified in levels. The dependent variables specified in levels and also the variables in the system are all specified in their levels form. And they all have the same lag length k equally. So in a VAR model, all the variables take the same number of lags. So now let us see how a VECM is specified. On the screen is a VECM specification. And on observation you will see that the difference operators are applied in the model. The dependent variable has a difference operator, likewise the short-run coefficients. All these are the short-run coefficients and they come with the difference operators. I wrote up here that for you to obtain a VECM, you must difference a VAR. And by differencing a VAR, you lose a lag. That is why the lag length here is a k minus 1 lag length across the entire system. Unlike a VAR model where you have k lags, under VECM is k minus 1. And I wrote here, the lag length is reduced by 1. So a VECM possesses a k minus 1 lag. Another very important feature of a VECM is this. This is the error correction term and the adjustment coefficient. The error correction term is a lagged value of the residuals obtained from the co-integrating regression of the dependent variable on the regressors. And this error correction term contains the long-run information derived from the co-integrating relationship. So once you are specifying your VECM, you must include the error correction term and the adjustment coefficient. Without these components, your VECM is wrongly specified. So this is a three variable VECM. All these parameters are the short run coefficients of the model's adjustment to long run equilibrium. And the UTs are the stochastic error terms, also called impulses or innovations or shocks. So explaining the VECM further, the conventional manner by which it can be written is as shown on the screen, where you have the dependent variable as a function of its lag and also a function of the lag values of other regressors in the system. 
now it now comes with an uh, error correction term component which captures the long run information in the system not forgetting the fact that it has a k minus 1 lag length and not k explaining the specifics of a vacuum the ect here is simply the lag oils residual obtained from this mathematical uh, computation of the long run equation so after you estimate the long run model you extract the residual once you lag it it becomes the integrating equation which is what we have here so this is a mathematical form of computing the error correction term and the error correction term simply explains the previous uh, year's deviation from the long run equilibrium which is the error in this case and such error influences the short run movement in the dependent variable so the error correction term simply explains previous deviation from long run equilibrium lambda is the coefficient of the error correction term and is also known as the speed of adjustment why so it is because it measures the speed at which the dependent variable returns to equilibrium after changes in the regressors so if you want to know how fast the dependent variable is restored back to equilibrium it is lambda that captures the movement in the system so how do we go about estimating a vacuum i outline here some simple steps the first is that you must ensure that the series you want to use are stationary that is they are integrated of the same order go ahead to determine the optimal lag for the model perform johansen cointegration test if there is no cointegration estimate the unrestricted var model and if there is cointegration specify the restricted var model which is the vacuum please don't go away in my next video i will show you how to estimate and interpret the vector error correction model thank you for watching click the subscribe button if you have not done so so that you can get my videos the moment i upload you can share this video and other links to my videos to your friends in other platform. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users of econometrics. Don't go away. Stay with me. I'll be right back.